In 1960, a psychologist at Sanford University in California created an experiment to test children on how well they could delay gratification. Delaying gratification means you can postpone some type of pleasant reward for a future time and put up with being unsatisfied for a period of time. Imagine a child in a room seated at a table. The psychologist shows the child a piece of candy and says, I'm leaving the room for a little while. If you don't eat the piece of candy until I return, I will give you not only this piece of candy, but 10 others like it for you to eat. All you have to do is wait at the table and not eat this one piece. You'll get more when I return. What do you think the little children did? Some of them were only four years old and some were as old as eight years. What do you think your own children would do? When do you think that they'd be old enough to resist taking that one piece of candy and delay gratification? What do you think you would do in this situation if it was, well, something like a couple, couple dollars on the table. Would you be able to delay gratification? Mm, pretty, pretty easily. What do you think? This experiment was repeated many times for many children. It is still a very common experiment to test a child's self-control. The results are that about one-third of the children eat the piece of candy before the adult returns to the room. They can't wait or can't delay their gratification for a much larger reward, even for a few minutes. The psychologists have followed up on the children at various times later in their life to see how they were doing. One result of the experiment was that it seemed that the children who could delay gratification and wait for the bigger reward did much better at school throughout their lives, had better jobs, and were generally more successful in life. Now, I don't think any of us really need a psychologist to teach us that not giving in to temptation and our first impulses will help us learn patience and hard work to achieve better things in life. It's something we learn at a very early age when our parents teach us to do our homework before we go out and play, wash our hands before we eat, or brush our teeth before we go to bed at night. We do the things we don't enjoy so much as we can get better rewards like health and education and good relationships with other people. But there is really one other thing to learn from this experiment that these little children, that we might not really appreciate. When the psychologists looked at the different behaviors of the children who ate the candy right away, in contrast to the children who waited, they noticed that the children who waited usually had a strategy to help them while they waited. You can imagine what these children looked like as the temptation of the candy sat there right in front of them. Many of the children would wait and they would just shut, shut their eyes and sit on their hands trying to ignore the tempting candy. Some of the children got up from their chairs and turned around and faced the wall so that they didn't have to look at the candy. <laughs> Some of the children started saying quietly to themselves, I will not eat that candy. I will not eat that candy. The children who were successful at waiting found things to do to help them to deal with the temptation. They distracted themselves, turned their attention to other things, and did their best to ignore the candy. The children who ate the candy right away just sat there quietly looking at the candy until they couldn't stand it and the wait any longer. Today is the first Sunday of Lent and we begin the great experiment whereby we come face to face 
with the temptations of sin in our lives. We follow the example of Jesus who went into the desert to come face to face with the devil who is tempting him to give up his mission to preach the gospel. Our own 40 days of Lent remind us of the 40 years of the people of Israel wandering in the desert too before entering the promised land. They spent 40 years learning how to depend upon God, delaying gratification for quite a long time, forsaking the sinfulness of their lives in Egypt and learning how to live by the covenant that God made with his people on Mount Sinai. The desert of Lent puts our temptations right in front of us on the table. We look at the sins of our lives and turn, return back to God with our whole hearts. We can learn a little ch from the children from uh, the experiment on how to face the temptations of sin. We have to have a strategy, a plan to fight against the evil one who is trying to trick us and tempt us to turn away from <laughs> God. The church gives us three penitential practices to fight against sin and temptation and are our main strategies for dealing with temptation. These are the three pillars of Lent, prayer, sacrifice, often in the form of fasting, and charity, often in the form of almsgiving. We can't just sit here during the time and do nothing. If we do not engage in penance, we will not have any strength to resist the temptation to sin. That means we must take the time to plan out our Lent. At every moment of our day, we should be mindful that this is a special time. We do this by praying more, praying different prayers like the Stations of the Cross, or spending more time in quiet meditation on the sacred scriptures. We also engage in fasting and sacrifice. First of all, we give up meat on Fridays and Lent, but we also should give up something else that is significant. Maybe we give up drinking alcoholic beverages. Maybe we give up candy, sweets, or dessert. Maybe we give up something other than food, like watching television or binging on on streaming flicks or scrolling through Facebook or other online activities like video games. Whatever it is, it should be a real sacrifice that tests us each and every day. It can't be too easy. Our sacrifice and self-denial has to reach the limits of our willpower and show how easily we can give in to temptation without the help of God. Finally, our prayer and our sacrifice mean nothing if it doesn't produce charity and compassion for others. First of all, we should set aside a little money each day, perhaps just the coins in our pockets, and give that to the poor. Operation Rice Bowl by Catholic Relief Services is a good way to give money to the poor, as is the baby bottle collection for the Lifeline Pregnancy Help Center. The boxes for Operation Rice Bowl are on the back table. But it isn't only almsgiving that we should be working on. Our Lent and penance should make us more available for others. We should identify activities that demonstrate our loving compassion for others. For most of us, it means doing the things we do for our family or at work with a more generous and loving heart, doing our work without complaining, giving a little extra of our time to others without being asked. Just being kind, helpful, and friendly can go a long way in our fight against temptation. Remember that Lent isn't just a time of self-improvement. Lent is a time to leave sin behind so we can draw closer to God and be prepared to celebrate the Paschal Mystery at the end of Lent. We deny ourselves in Lent so that we can be more disposed to receive the special grace that comes during Holy Week and Easter Sunday 
and experience the perfect and complete reward, which is eternal life with Christ. <laughs>